If you've seen any of my previous videos, you know how much I've just like struggled with acne so, so bad. I have tried so many things over the years, especially these past two years. I would say I really got serious about not just trying to like fix my acne, but try to find a cure for it, try to find like the root cause. Anyway, after struggling with my acne for so, so long, I feel like I've finally gotten to a good place with my skin over these past few months. I feel like I haven't felt this confident in my skin in such a long time and I'm really grateful for it. So I really want to share with y'all what has worked for me in terms of like topicals and supplements and even diets because I think that's also important. Um, but yeah, I really want this to kind of be a source of hope and inspiration that it does get better, your acne will get better and it will clear up. But I'm not gonna lie, it does take a lot of effort and I'll just share with y'all what has been working for me over these past few months. All right, so before we get into the good stuff and I start sharing all the products and topicals and supplements that I've been using, I want to show y'all some pictures of what my skin has looked like from January up until now, just so y'all can kind of get a sense of like what my progress has been and they're kind of embarrassing pictures, but I do want to share them with y'all just so y'all can see kind of like what my skin has been like over these past few months. So January, I was going all in on the benzoyl peroxide. Like I was using that day and night. I was slathering it all over my face and just like covering my face in it. I was getting a lot of cystic pimples, mostly around my jawline. And even with the benzoyl peroxide, the pimples that I was getting would not go away. My skin felt super tight and itchy and I really hated how benzoyl peroxide was making my skin feel. But honestly, I just stuck with it anyway because like I've used benzoyl peroxide in the past and it's really, really cleared up some bad breakouts. So I knew that if I just stuck with it, it was gonna be okay. So then yeah, like end of February, sorry, end of January going into February, I was also getting really huge whiteheads, like full of pus, which is really gross, I know, but they were just like on my cheeks, kind of on my jawline, and I tried my best not to touch them because I knew that like popping them would lead to scarring, and so I really wanted to avoid that, but literally like they would just pop on their own and start oozing out pus because they were just like so fucking big which is really gross, I know, but I know that that was just like the benzoyl peroxide like pushing out everything, which I'd rather have a huge whitehead than like a huge cystic pimple that I know is gonna just stay there for months. So yeah, I got a few of those. And then mid-February through March, I kind of felt like my skin was slowly starting to get a little bit better. My neck was clearing up a little bit. And then so were my cheeks and my jawline. I was still getting like a few cystic pimples here and there, like underneath the skin ones, like not the whitehead ones. But overall, I felt like I was starting to feel pretty good about my skin and I felt like it was starting to become like a little bit more consistent, like it stayed more consistently clear. Then in April is when I virtually had no like cystic pimples or whiteheads on my face. Um, of course, I was still dealing with acne scars and pretty bad hyperpigmentation and texture, which honestly really fucking sucks, but I was really happy that I wasn't breaking out anymore, which was, again, it was just so amazing. And so that brings us to today. And this is what my skin is looking like so far. As you can see, it's pretty clear and I am wearing tinted sunscreen, so you can probably see that too. But for the most part, I do feel really confident in my skin right now and I feel like it's been consistent for like a few months now, which is just mind-blowing. It's amazing. And yeah, 
that's my skin's looking like right now okay so i did want to show y'all what my skin looks like without any tinted sunscreen so this is what it's currently looking like right now as you can see i still have a lot of hyperpigmentation um and a lot of texture too especially on my cheeks uh but i don't really have any like actual pimples i think i only have like one like right here that's really tiny this one is like starting to go away um and then i had one here but just like very very small and it kind of just like went away really quickly which is nice but overall i'm really happy with where my skin is at right now i think even with like the scars even with the texture I still feel really good about it. So after taking a lot of different tests and talking to my naturopathic doctor and trying out different kind of like supplement regimens, what I'm currently taking right now is really to address gut health, which I feel like is really important. And I do feel that that's kind of like one of the root causes of my acne. So I'm just gonna share with y'all what I've been taking. Okay, so this is everything that I'm taking right now. And these are things that I take every single day and yes it's a lot of pills to be swallowing every single day but these pills are expensive so i'm just gonna put them to good use <laughs> so this is gi revive and basically it's really good for your gut microbiome i think it adds a lot of like good bacteria into your gut so i'm taking this I'm also taking magnesium citrate and this is basically just to like get your bowels moving and make sure like you're eliminating everything properly. So I take this every single night. And I'm also taking milk thistle. Here it says that it helps support liver function. So I guess it's for my liver. And then I'm also taking Zen, which is kind of like I take it every night. It's not a sleeping pill, but it kind of helps to regulate your sleep. Um, so that's kind of why I'm taking this one. And then of course I'm also taking a probiotic. This is like a spore. Yeah, all spore antioxidant producing probiotic. So I guess like a spore probiotic is better than a regular one. But of course this just helps to add more good bacteria to my gut so love a good probiotic and then i'm also taking lemon balm which is supposed to help with stress so this kind of like helps to calm your nerves a little bit and i'm sure y'all have heard that like stress high levels of stress really contribute to acne so this is kind of like what that's addressing and then i don't have it with me but i'm also taking vitamin d I haven't been taking it as much or as diligently as I used to because I know that right now my levels are pretty good and I've been going outside more so I know that I'm getting a lot of vitamin D but that is also another supplement that I take regularly. And then I was also taking another supplement called Motil Pro which I just ran out of and I think I'm not going to go back on that one because I've already used I think about like three or so bottles. Um, I'm not sure what that one was for, but just helped with like my overall gut health, I guess. So that's everything that I'm using to address things internally when it comes to my acne. But since my acne is so persistent and so stubborn, I also use topicals just to kind of like help it move along, help it clear up faster. Okay, so this combination right here is literally what made the biggest difference for my skin and I know what some people are gonna say you're never supposed to mix retin-a with benzoyl peroxide and yes I would 100% agree you're not supposed to mix it too because I feel like or I think that they can kind of cancel each other out um, and make them like ineffective so what I would do is I would use benzoyl peroxide every single morning and then I would also use it every other night and then every night that I wasn't using benzoyl peroxide, I was using the Retin-A. So I was kind of, I was being pretty aggressive with my skincare routine just because 
my skin was covered in acne and I knew that to help it clear up faster, I knew that I had to like really be consistent and apply like a lot of like benzoyl peroxide in particular just to help clear it up and that's what I did basically from January all the way up until up until April so until pretty recently I kind of like stopped using so much benzoyl peroxide so I only use benzoyl peroxide now only at night and not in the morning at all and then I only use retin-a two nights out of the week obviously the two nights that I don't use the benzoyl peroxide and I feel like that is really working well for me and one of the reasons why I stopped using benzoyl peroxide in the morning aside from like I, I felt like it was a little bit too drying and a little bit too aggressive at this point but literally it just bleaches everything and I just felt like I had to be so careful with like what I was wearing and just making sure that I didn't touch my clothes and I literally could only wear white for like a few months which just it just sucked so only using benzoyl peroxide at night just feels like a hundred times better and it still has kept my skin pretty clear pretty consistently so I feel like it's working out for me so now in the mornings instead of using the benzoyl peroxide I use the Paula's Choice 2% BHA I don't know if it's really doing too much for my skin but I mean it's salicylic acid I feel like it's probably doing something and the most important thing is that it just doesn't bleach my clothes so right now that's what I'm using and I feel like it's going pretty well aside from using benzoyl peroxide and the Paula's Choice salicylic acid and retin-a I'm also still using like all of my regular uh, skincare stuff so I use my Neutrogena gentle cleanser the creamy one and then I also use my Vanity cream lotion my sunscreen of course and then I'll also do like the Neutrogena Hydro Boost if I feel like my skin is feeling like pretty dry so all of that in combination is what really took my skin from looking like this to this Okay, so we covered supplements and we covered topicals, but I also want to mention diet because I am one of those people that believes that your diet and what you eat can really have an impact on your skin. So starting back in February, I actually started an elimination diet. And for those of y'all that don't know, an elimination diet is basically where you go six weeks without eating foods that trigger you or foods that you're sensitive to so you go six weeks you cut out all of that stuff and you just kind of let your body heal and then after those six weeks you one by one like reintroduce like every single food that you're like sensitive to and you're basically just testing it to see what kind of reactions your body has okay so the foods that i eliminated were dairy, gluten, eggs, sugar, soy, chocolate, peanuts, corn, caffeine, processed oils, garlic, potatoes, and yeast. Anyway, right now I am in the reinjection phase and I've reintroduced like eggs and soy and gluten and I've reintroduced them like super, super slowly and cautiously back into my diet uh, just to like test them out and see like what happens when I eat these certain foods and I can already tell that like with soy I can tell that it's like kind of breaking me out a little bit it's nothing drastic but I do like I did notice like a few whiteheads popping up and I'm pretty sure that that was because of some soy that I had so that's just my theory anyway I say all of this to say that if you are really struggling with your acne and it's very very persistent i would suggest like looking into your diet and potentially potentially trying a elimination diet just to see exactly like what foods are triggering you or triggering reactions in your body and potentially like causing you acne and to be real it's been so hard trying to stick to this diet i sometimes really feel like i'm missing out like i feel like i can't like I tried to avoid restaurants as much as possible. I've just been cooking at home and that's been so difficult because it just feels like you're missing out, especially if like food is like a very social thing for you. 
And for me, like, sometimes I do feel like I'm depriving myself. Like I have not had a dessert in months and I have a huge sweet tooth. So that is just, it's so depressing. But at the end of the day, I know kind of like why I'm doing it and I would rather skip out on having a dessert than you know waking up with like a face full of acne and at this point in my life I know that that's really a priority so that kind of just like justifies it and really makes it worth it for me because I know how frustrating it is to have to deal with like so much acne that you just don't even know what to do. So for me, it's worth it, skipping out on dessert, skipping out on bread, all that stuff. I feel like it's worth it. And honestly, it's healthier for me, I guess, like skipping out on like dessert and stuff. So that's just like how I'm justifying it. All right, y'all, so that brings us to the end of this update video. Overall, I feel like I'm really happy with where my skin is right now. I feel like I'm just really grateful for the progress that my skin has made and like looking back at those pictures it's really come a long way so i'm really happy about that and i'm also excited to start looking into like treatments for my acne scars and my texture because i really want this to go away i don't want to be scarred like this forever but yeah hopefully this video was helpful in some way shape or form and if you have any questions for me, please leave them down below and I'll be happy to answer them. And yeah, thank you so much for watching this video and I will talk to you later.